Thank you, uh, Professor Laila Khalid, uh, for inviting me for the lecture. So uh, the lecture which I will be uh, deliberating on uh, this occasion is the ecosystem restoration. Mm -hmm. So in this uh, presentation, I will be discussing about the ecosystem. What is the ecosystem? What are the ecosystem uh, uh, functions and what are what is the ecosystem made of basically to give a basic understanding what is the ecosystem then I will be discussing about the ecosystem services and later on uh, I will be briefing about the ecosystem degradation and ecosystem restoration so as we know the ecosystem term was proposed in 1935 by A.G. Tensley which have defined an ecosystem as self-sustained community of plants, animals existing in an environment. So first we have to understand what is a system. A system is any uh, thing which has boundary, which has inputs and which has outputs. So uh, when we are talking about the ecosystem, it is basically having an imaginary boundary where one ecosystem is uh, differentiated by other ecosystem like a forest ecosystem is uh, different by a grassland ecosystem and a grassland ecosystem is different by a desert or aquatic ecosystem so it is a kind of imaginary uh, line where we can differentiate so uh, where in an ecosystem the components basically are biotic components abiotic components and climatic and soil factors so biotic component uh, components as we have been knowing from our childhood the biotic components are living components for example plants animals and microorganisms they are basically the decomposers like bacteria fungi actinomycetes they have very important eco ecological role in a food chain in an ecosystem the second uh, uh, structure of an ecosystem, what of structure uh, an ecosystem is made of is abiotic structures like the physical components like fresh water, soil, atmosphere. So these two uh, components are on and off interacting with each, 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 uh, with each other so that there is a flow of energy. Flow of energy basically when uh, plants do photosynthesis and they capture the sunlight uh, 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 by using carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and water and then they create the biomass and that biomass is uh, in which the energy is embedded and that energy is transferred over the various food chains or various tropic structures. So in an, any particular ecosystem, maybe it is a forest ecosystem, maybe it is a grassland, they have a definite tropic structure. So tropic structure varies from ecosystem to ecosystem. So these two properties first there is a definite flow of energy there is a definite tropic structure uh, over the food chains and there is biotic diversity biotic diversity is very important component of any ecosystem which gives an ecosystem a resistance and a resilience when there are some stressful conditions that may be originated from an artificial or uh, uh, from uh, natural calamities now the third component that ecosystem is made of that is climatic factors or we can say soil factors or edaphic factors basically the minerals from which the soil topography undulation so what is a water table content or what is a groundwater level and climatic factors like tem uh, temperate type of climate tropical subtropical so here we want to uh, i want to tell you that uh, regarding the biotic diversity the Biotic diversity is very closely linked with that uh, climatic conditions. As we see in temperate type of climate, the biotic diversity in any ecosystem is very, very less as compared to tropical ecosystem. So uh, we can say that temperate kind of uh, ecosystem is uh, less resistant and less resilient as compared to tropical ecosystem. So these were the properties. And the last one property is the biogeochemical cycle that is very closely related with the decomposers. So whatever biomass is created, whatever biomass is transferred over the uh, various uh, tropic structures in an ecosystem, some of the biomass is degraded by the uh, bacteria, fungi, or actinomycetes. If that doesn't happen, there, there will be problem in an ecosystem. There will be piles of the dead organic material and that can create a problem that can reduce the soil fertility and also uh, the uh, self-sustained 
the self sustenance of the ecosystem will the ecosystem will collapse or the period of time because uh, the, there will be no definite tropic structure so this was the basics of an ecosystem what is the ecosystem made of and what is the ecosystem properties now what the services the ecosystem provides us in layman's term uh, we can say the benefits that the people obtain from an ecosystem the benefits may be tangible or intangible they can be uh, uh, various kinds of services but millennium uh, ecosystem assessment have categorized the ecosystem services uh, in three major uh, categories like provisioning services regulating services cultural services and supporting services so first we will be discussing what are the provisioning services that an ecosystem provides us basically the products that we obtain from an ecosystem like food like we are getting food from forests maybe some uh, uh, forest products also but major of the food components we are getting from the agriculture that is the provisioning service of an ecosystem fresh water the melting of the glaciers the hydrological cycle that all uh, uh, circulates the ocean water through the uh, evaporation then precipitation from the clouds and that fresh water is available to the uh, ecosystem components because humans are also a component of an ecosystem then we get wood firewood fiber bio uh, chemicals genetic resources fuels all these uh, category categories are under the provisioning service of an ecosystem then another category is regulating services those services which uh, benefits are obtained from the regulating the ecosystem the, that services they uh, regulate overall the ecosystem uh, other uh, eco ecosystem services like climate regulation for example climate regulation is very important component of an uh, ecosystem service for example if uh, 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 if any uh, place having a forest uh, can regulate the microclimate. I have been uh, remembering when I was uh, working and studying in New Delhi, uh, our campus was very green. So uh, on and off, there was uh, a temperature difference of five degrees. If it is outside 40 degrees, inside campus, it was 35 degrees Celsius. So uh, we were practically visualizing how can a small patch of forest cover can impact how can they regulate the climate and weather conditions of a particular place? So uh, if there are more forests, then there will be more rainfall, more climate regulations. And uh, we can uh, handle the climate change, the, the impacts of climate change, basically. Then other important uh, regulating service is flood regulation this also i can uh, i want to relate with the foresters when the forest cover is uh, uh, very good then it can hold the soil and there will be less uh, flash floods this also implies with the marine ecosystem where mangrove plantation can uh, reduce the impact of storm surges that are initiated by cyclones or tsunami so um, nowadays man is disturbing the marine ecosystem brackish water uh, ecosystem like uh, salt marshes mangroves and uh, sea grasses that regulate the flood storm surges from the oceans likewise on terrestrial ecosystem also the humans have uh, impacted they have uh, reduced the forest cover which have increased the occurrence of floods so if the forest uh, cover increases there will be less occurrence of floods particularly in uh, summers there is flash flood kind of thing that suddenly the streams get full of water uh, with a small uh, kind of precipitation so another uh, properties like soil erosion so erosion is also related with the how the plants and uh, how the small root how the roots of the plants can uh, bind the soil particles and reduce the erosion then disease regulation disease regulation means in in an ecosystem there is a chain where one organism is controlled by another organism if we disturb an ecosystem by removing any species then there will be the prolific proliferation of any other species that uh, may result as a disease or a pest uh, and then it can disturb overall all ecosystem and another uh, regulating service that ecosystem provides us is water purification water purification is uh, beautifully done by the wetlands 
or wetland ecosystems whenever whenever any water body is having uh, the waste water it has been uh, very practically uh, done in uh, indian agriculture research institute one of uh, my colleagues were uh, working on the subsurface uh, wetland uh, filtration of uh, the domestic sewage water and that they have patented that kind of system how the wetlands purify the waste water so this is also important these services are already available in the nature but due to over the period of time we have uh, encroached the wetland bodies and uh, we are not visualizing these kind of benefits uh, from the ecosystem so a uh, third one is a cultural service cultural services are basically intangible benefits that we may not be visualizing like aesthetic services spiritual services education like we are going to the botanical tours zoological tours some uh, spiritual people they are going for meditation to the forests then recreational services we are going for the excursion camping a picnic we are going so uh, these services we uh, cannot visualize we cannot we only can feel that those services so overall all these three services are regulated they are supported by the supporting services like nutrient cycling so decomposition by the microorganisms if the microorganisms are not available in an ecosystem then there will be the problem all these th three services will be hampered they will not be uh, working properly if there will be no decomposition it if there will be no nutrient cycle like nitrogen cycle carbon cycle hydrogen cycle so all these cycles are related to the decomposers so decomposers have very important role in an ecosystem soil formation as we know that one uh, five uh, centimeter of the top soil uh, takes around 1000 years for the formation so it is very complex process of weathering biological chemical and physical weathering so it takes very large uh, period of time so <clears throat> if there is no soil availability no soil formation then the plants will not be available to uh, the soils will not be available for the plants to grow. Then primary production. Primary production is also one of the basic uh, function of an ecosystem where plants capture the sunlight and transform it into the biomass and that the biomass transfers to other tropic structures. So primary production, if there will be no photosynthesis means there will be the uh, disturbance uh, in, over, uh, in the ecosystem and uh, after a small period of time, ecosystem will collapse. So these were the services that an ecosystem provides us, but over the period of time, after particularly after the industrialization, the ecosystem has shown a degradation. So degradation in the quality and quantity, how uh, the ecosystem has behaved to these uh, anthropogenic uh, sources of uh, stresses like pollution. For example, <clears throat> nowadays, uh, particularly in uh, JNK UD, uh, particularly in Srinagar city, there are only six uh, CBS treatment plants and only one CBS treatment plant is working properly and that too is overburdened. So here, most of the untreated sewage finds its way to the uh, or receiving water bodies like Dal Lake, where uh, various other aquatic ecosystem is disturbed. Like uh, there is uh, the biomagnification, uh, there is a uh, biomagnification of, there is the, the enrichment of the nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, and it leads to the uh, deficiency of oxygen, uh, biological oxygen demand of the water increases and overall the aquatic fishes, they die because of the suffocation, because of the, because of the lack of the oxygen. So here, how an ac aquatic ecosystem is disturbed by the uh, sewage, so uh, likewise, or uh, land where uh, we dispose of the solid waste. So solid waste is just uh, thrashed out over the land uh, without knowing what are the impacts. So we can segregate the solid waste in biodegradable and degradable where biodegradable can be used for the preparation of compost and degradable, they can, it can be used for other purposes, for recycling purpose. So uh, another stress is global warming. 
global warming is uh, every year there is an increasing concentration of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. It has been estimated that every year there is one parts per million increase in the uh, carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Nowadays, there is the concentration of uh, the carbon dioxide is around 400 parts per million. So uh, uh, in our earlier textbooks, we used to study that uh, the concentration of carbon dioxide is around 0.03%, but it is now more than 0.04%. Person. So over the period of time, the concentration of the carbon dioxide has been increased around 137 percent. So this has led to a more absorption, a more absorption of the solar radiation, which have led to the increased temperature and which as a result makes our glaciers to melt very fast. That has leads to the floods and scarcity of the water in peak season, particularly in summer season. So this also uh, disrupts and degrades our your glacier ecosystem. Then our population, particularly in urban areas, metropolitan cities, where people come in search of job and livelihood, the pressure on the natural resources like water resources increasing. Like in Delhi, most of the zones have been declared as black zone because of degrading the uh, quality and quantity of the groundwater. So our population for we have we are going more for agriculture, more intensive agriculture, high yielding varieties where we use more pesticides, more fertilizers, more irrigation water, which overall degrades our ecosystem. Like uh, in Punjab and Haryana, because of the green revolution, they are using high yielding varieties. They are using uh, highly intensive fertilizer doses, pesticide doses, which have uh, which increases the withdrawal rates of the groundwater. Which have lead to the bio, uh, which have lead to to the nitrogen phosphorus enrichment into the water bodies, pesticide. Likewise, in the last session, uh, in last program of uh, World Water Day, we were discussing a cancer train has been launched in the Amritsar, Punjab, because of the pesticide pollution. It is not only impacting the other components of an ecosystem, but it is directly impacting the humans also. Then natural resource depletion when there is uh, the, the demand of uh, the material, the demand of the gadgets in, is increasing, then there is an unsustainable use of natural resources that also can lead to the degradation of an ecosystem. Generation of unsustainable wastes like solid waste, like nuclear waste, and the electronic waste, they are all unsustainable waste because uh, they create very poisonous chemicals. They uh, to, goes to the environment and because of the food chain biomagnification, they find way into the uh, bodies of various organisms. Then deforestation is also an impo uh, important, like uh, our worthy principle have been discussing that how we have lead to the deforestation where uh, recently uh, there was an incident, a uh, four year girl was uh, killed by a leopard. Uh, basically, the leopard has not intruded to our habitat. We have intruded to the forests. Or at a, or a period of time, humans have not realized how they have encroached to the habitat of wildlife. So they, we have degraded, we have fragmented the eco, uh, ecosystem of uh, the wildlife so that uh, over the period of time for the search of food and uh, for the search of prey, they come to the human uh, inhabitation. That polar ice, because of the global warming, polar ice, they are melting, glaciers are receding at the very fast rate. Over the period of time, the glaciers, uh, in particularly in uh, Jammu and Kashmir, there were many glaciers, but over the period of time, they have been disappeared, disappearing at very alarming rate. Loss of biodiversity, it is, uh, biodiversity is very important component of an ecosystem. If there is a loss of biodiversity, the resilience and resistance of an ecosystem for any external stress is decreasing. For example, uh, loss of biodiversity, I can, it, I can relate it to the currently the Thar Desert in Rajasthan. Earlier, it was said that it was very pristine uh, green forest because of uh, the poaching and hunting of the top carnivores like tigers, lions at that time. The herbivore population increases and that leads to the desertification of that area and gradually leads to desert formation. So a loss of biodiversity, a loss of single species in an ecosystem can make a green forest into the a desert, which we cannot realize in our lifetime, but 
in 100 or 200 years, it gets transformed because of the desertification. So uh, in any ecosystem, a biodiversity is and very important. If there is a loss of biodiversity, gradually the ecosystem is losing its self-sustenance. Climate change, as we know, there, uh, climate change has very uh, uh, two patterns, like climate change is made of global warming and then global dimming. In global warming, there is an increase in temperature, but in global dimming, there is a decrease in temperature because of the black carbon from the industries, the black carbon is settling on the snow, there is uh, faster. As we know, black carbon uh, absorbs more uh, this uh, <clears throat> sunlight and increases the temperature and more glaciers are melting. But if it uh, resides in the atmosphere, it hinders the uh, sunlight uh, to the plants and uh, it reduces the photosynthesis. So there are both negative, uh, there are both uh, uh, temperature increase and decrease impacts because of the climate change. Now, ocean acidification is also an important uh, environmental degradation. How ocean acidific acidification happens when there is an increase in carbon dioxide concentration into the uh, atmosphere and there is a diffusion of carbon dioxide into the oceans that leads to increase in the carbonate and biocarbonate uh, concentration in, uh, in the ocean and that leads to problems to various uh, fishes. The uh, sea sh the uh, egg shells get dissolved because of the acidic conditions and there is a problem uh, in spawning and hatching of uh, the uh, fish eggs. So it also creates a problem to the aquatic ecosystem. Like nitrogen cycle, we have also uh, we have also uh, degraded our nitrogen cycle by in uh, giving uh, the chemical fertilizers like urea by because of the urea some of the bacteria they are not able to fix the atmospheric nitrogen so they are decreasing the diversity of the <clears throat> soil bacteria into the in, in the soil water pollution as i have been earlier dis uh, discussing this in the pollution overfishing uh, urban uh, sprawl, then uh, more of the urban areas uh, are increasing day by day because we are uh, removing, we are uh, cutting the forests and increasing the urban areas. Public health issues, like uh, we are facing the COVID-19 situation nowadays. So uh, it was said uh, that uh, in COVID-19, there is a positive impact on uh, the <clears throat> environment. But literally, if we are... Uh, Taking, if we are uh, visualizing other impacts of COVID-19 based on, on the environment. So there has been said in India only from last year, June to this year, May, there have been 40, uh, 45,000 tons increase in the biomedical wastes besides the normal 145 or 183 uh, tons of bio biomedical wastes which were generated annually. So besides the, there was, this is a positive impact on uh, the environment. There is another negative impact, increase in the biomedical waste is because of the environmental issue, uh, public health issues are, uh, if we uh, talk about the public health issues. Then genetic engineering. So in genetic engineering, we are suppressing our traditional gene pools of plants and animals. Like we are have introduced the Bt cotton, Bacillus thuringiensis cotton and uh, Bt brinjal. So this uh, basically <coughs> reduces the biodiversity of uh, the plants and animals. So this all these all 20 uh, major uh, stresses leads to the environmental degradation. So what are the ways and how can we improve how, and how can we restore the ecosystem to it is uh, at least to, to enhance the quality or to restore uh, the state of an ecosystem by various methods by for example enhancement in natural state uh, by various uh, interventions rehabilitation of functional ecosystem uh, where we can rehabilitate some species to the better uh, ecosystem then reclamation for example in mining area where the uh, all the land is disturbed or uh, it is made unavailable for agriculture we can reclamate it for uh, uh, other uh, particular plant species, for example, which can grow in the acidic condition, replacement of an ecosystem by an another ecosystem, restoration, and uh, creating an artificial ecosystem. So 
this is an, a diagram where various drivers for example which degrade the ecosystem services uh, and uh, they can overall uh, some uh, of these categories like increasing the protected areas that can be then ecological uh, parameters like farms and ranch so that can be socio economical parameters then economical parameters and other ecological parameters they all can be worked on so that these degrading factors can be overcome so that there is a path to the healing to the ecosystem where ecosystem can be restored by improving the uh, public health education awareness research more research and practice uh, into the various environmental issues ecological uh, uh, restoration and related uh, <coughs> restoration activities so we need a multi stakeholder multi pronged approach from zero uh, we have to work from a basic level how can a degraded ecosystem how our lives can be uh, more sustainable so that so that our ecosystem can be more sustainable for our future generations also so if we speak about a graph where uh, ecosystem can be uh, where ecosystem can be analyzed based on the biomass and nutrient content and species complexity uh, and species diversity basically for example this is an uh, original ecosystem and because of the stresses which i have earlier uh, discussed the ecosystem has degraded but there are various pathways where our ecosystem can be again restored by rehabilitating uh, rehabilitating some species so uh, here the species will find a new kind of environment by reclaiming for degree uh, slowly slowly if there is an uh, soil problem if soil is acidic or it is rocky soil we can reclaim we can use some uh, earthing material so that uh, slowly there is uh, <coughs> soil formation and, uh, and slowly slowly there is a uh, the ecosystem will be restored to its original position so at least we can afford uh, by reducing the impacts if there is any uh, pollution we can reduce the impact of the pollution we can reduce the intensity of the pollution in our uh, ecosystem various kinds of ecosystems and then next step will be the rehabilitation uh, but a final will be the restoration to its original position so this restoration of an ecosystem is a gradual approach it cannot happen at a time we have to work step by step so uh, at last i want to say save the environment save the life 